well, if the nappy's doing it for me, why do I need to bother going to the toilet? Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm a mum of two girls aged three and five, and this upload is all about delayed potty training. I have had this issue with my youngest child, and when I googled delayed potty training, I found that pretty much all the results were related to speech delay or some kind of physical impairment. Now, obviously, while I can't rule out that my little girl had some kind of maybe like bladder retention issue or something, like I never had her checked over by a doctor, I can tell you now that speech impediment was not her problem at all. She has been very verbal from a very young age. Her vocabulary is excellent, her understanding of our vocabulary is excellent, speech delay was not the issue. So I really wanted to make this video for the other mums out there who have a three-year-old and they're still not potty trained and you're seeing two-year-olds without nappies, happily wearing pants and using the toilet and you're thinking what on earth have I done wrong because I was in that exact same position. We had a lot of stopping, starting, stopping, starting. So right now I'm going to talk you through exactly what worked for us when it came to delayed potty training and a few of my absolute favourite potty training tips to help you finally ditch the nappies. Okay, so when it comes to delayed potty training, if you've landed on this video then you've probably got a child who you've already tried to potty train several times and it's just going nowhere. Now, a lot of tips are out there um, about potty training and how to potty train your child, what the best way to potty train is. And a lot of them talk about rewards and reward systems. Now, we tried this and I have to say, it did absolutely nothing for us. Um, and I'll explain why. So with the stickers, it's exciting for a day. And then it's like, oh, it's just a sticker. I play with stickers all the time, like when we're playing. Like this isn't interesting, me just sticking a sticker on this chart. Okay, so the sticker novelty factor for my per child personally wore off. Now every child might be different, so it's worth giving it a try. But what I'm saying is if you've tried it already and that hasn't worked, join the club, it did not work for me either. Um, when it came to rewards, I also didn't want to go down the road of offering her a treat every time she went on the toilet because um, I just know then that what we'll get is her going on the toilet every five minutes, claiming to be doing a teeny weeny wee, and then being like, give me the treat, give me the treat, give me the treat. So I also didn't want to go down that road, particularly as I could tell that we were not at the point where she was actually willing to give this a proper go. So one of our biggest issues was she would have like say an hour of, yeah, great potty training. Yeah, I'm up for this, I'm ready for it. So we'd start off the day really, really well. She'd do a wee on the loo, it'd be all going brilliant. And then for the rest of the day, every single wee, every single poo would be in her pants. And it would be like, I think really it comes down mostly to when your child is ready and finding that right moment when your child is ready. For me personally, having gone through this now, the big thing that I'm so glad that I didn't do was labour the point too much. So I'm sure there are some cases where if you are incredibly patient over a period of a month, you can force potty, potty training to happen. Of You know, of course you can, I'm sure you can. But for me personally, that wasn't gonna work out. I couldn't go day after day after day of her wetting through trousers, pants, pooing in pants. And to be honest, when there is a poo in a pair of pants, I do just throw it away because I, I, I don't really wanna deal with that. If every single wee and poo is happening in the pants, for me personally, that is a sign that this child is not ready. Even say, when you are putting them on the toilet, they're like, no, don't need to go. Okay, 20 minutes later, you're putting them on the toilet. No, they don't need to go. Okay, and then five minutes after that, they're weeing themselves. So, you know, even with all your best efforts, you're not able to get them to do what they need to do on the toilet. I think that is a strong sign that this child is not ready and there's no point in laboring this issue. So this is my next tip and that's that you may have to stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start again and again and again and we did. So obviously we've been in lockdown for the last few months and I thought yay this is the perfect time for potty training and I've stopped and started about six or seven times and eventually we had a huge break of about a month because I was like look this, she's just not ready, she's just not up for it and I would try talking to her about it quite frequently and I do really recommend that talking to them as much as you can can really help but I would try talking to her about it and again we still have this disconnect where she just didn't want to engage on it she just wasn't interested she just wasn't up for it she just wasn't ready to do it so if you do have to stop if you do have to throw in the towel a few times 
don't worry about it don't beat yourself up put the nappies back on give it a break for a few days test the waters again in a few days see how you get on so where things finally clicked for us i can't really pinpoint exactly like what changed in her but one day we got up and i was like right we're trying this again put the pants on her and I was like okay you're gonna use the toilet and again I went through the the method of reminding her every 20 minutes do you need a wee do you need a wee and this time there were no arguments she got on the toilet and actually did the wee she did have a couple of accidents but every single time she went wasn't an accident so we had more successes where she actually did a wee on the toilet than we had accidents okay so I was still accepting the accident I don't think an accident is a total write-off of this as a failure it's just when every single wee is happening in the pants and every single poo is happening in the pants that's when you've just got to like wave the right flag so I knew this time was different because she was having like one accident in two days okay and then within a week finally I was like god she's taking herself to the toilet now she doesn't need me to remind her she's just hopping on I could just hear her in the other room hopping on the toilet flushing the loo getting off washing her hands I was like oh my god it's actually happened what I'm really really glad about is that we never like fell out with her over it on trying to force her it didn't become a negative thing and I think that's a really really important thing to keep in mind you don't want using the toilet to become a negative thing like something they associate with you being upset and cross then being forced into it like if they're not ready there is just no point in forcing the issue upsetting yourself and upsetting them so keep it positive keep it happy if it doesn't work out stop start again and then they just associate it with positive things so one thing that i was gearing up to try before she actually managed to crack the potty training um so luckily we didn't have to do this i had a potty with my first child but with my second i decided to just go for toilet seats on the toilet with a little step up and that worked out really well for her but in the end but while things weren't working I was contemplating buying a new potty which I would put in her playroom so that she didn't have to go through the thing of stopping playing or stopping watching the TV and leaving the room and having to go to the toilet because I think one of her issues was she just wasn't interested in stopping what she was doing to go and use the toilet so I thought okay maybe I can buy a potty put it right near her where she's playing and then she doesn't have to go so far to use the toilet so that was one thing that I was going to deploy that in the end I didn't have to deploy but if you are at a stage where you're trying to think of something else that may work I would recommend doing that if you haven't already got an actual potty you likely already do but if you haven't already got an actual potty that you can put near where they play I really really recommend doing that okay so just a few tips on the actual process of potty training so I think one of the things about lockdown which really helped for us was that we weren't really going many places and when we were going anywhere we weren't going very far so we were sticking close to home and I think sticking close to home when you're in the thick of potty training can really really help because it means that your child has immediate access to the toilet you're not desperately scrambling around looking for public toilets and obviously as we know at the moment public toilets in certain places are closed so it is a lot trickier so when you are potty training stick at home for the first few days if things seems to be working out quite well then I thoroughly recommend these products for when you are out and about potty training so the first is this which I had with my first child and now also I'm using with my second it's called the Patet Plus and it's a portable potty as you can see it folds super flat it fits in my backpack which is brilliant um, it has these legs which you can use as a toilet seat so if you're in a public place and there's a toilet with no toilet seat on then your child can hop on quite easily or it becomes a little potty of its own so you snap the legs down and it comes with these potty liners you pop a bag into the potty like so you sort of hook the handles over the little legs there's these handy grooves here for the handles to hang over your child sits on the potty does their business you whip the bag off tie it up and pop it in a bin as you would with some dog poop and then it just the legs pop out and pop down again you put that back in your backpack and you're ready to go so i really really recommend this i'm going to do a link in the description below to this um i think this is one of like my all-time favorite 
toddler young child products it has been absolutely amazing and as i've said it's lasted us for both kids so the next thing you really need is one of these uh, you put it on the seat of the buggy or on your car seat it is super absorbent it's waterproof on the bottom so your child sits on there if they do happen to have an accident then it protects your buggy or your car seat which is really really good because you probably have a change of clothes in your bag but what are you going to do if you've got a really really wet yucky car seat and you've got to drive your child home they're not going to be too happy about sitting on the wet car seat and also it smells so you know it saves you a whole lot of hassle and next up once your child is finally in the mode of using the toilet pull-ups so we've made the switch to pull-ups fairly recently we were using nappies up until that so she's not dry at night yet so she's wearing these at night what I'm trying to do is encourage her to still use the toilet when she's awake so that we can sort of get to that point where she knows even at night she needs to get to the toilet but she is still having a wee in her sleep and at night and that's fine i think i've read that children aren't expected to be dry at night until like maybe five or six so my eldest was dry at night straight away. Every child is different, so I'm not stressing about that. So we've got pull-ups for her. Um, I think these ones are from Tesco. I think these are Tesco own brand ones. These have been absolutely great. They're perfectly absorbent for the night. The one thing that I don't recommend doing, I really don't recommend doing, and I think everyone's different, but this is just my personal view, is using pull-ups as pants in the day when you're potty training because certainly if your child is like mine her mindset was always well if the nappy's doing it for me why do I need to bother going to the toilet you know so they need to feel wet and uncomfortable when they have an accident to understand what's gone wrong and that what they should have done is gone on the toilet instead of going in there pants so giving them a nappy just basically is signaling to them you don't really need to use the toilet so I suggest get the pull-ups for the night don't use them in the day stick to nappies and speaking of wearing pants and nappies one great tip that I had and we did try it a couple of days on warm days was to strip everything off so have your child run naked around the house and what that means is when they do have an accident on the floor although it's messy for your floor and I wouldn't recommend doing it if you have very expensive carpet, but if you have hard floor, um, if your child does have an accident on the floor, they see it immediately. Like there's no clothing to catch it. And it sort of like sends them a signal like, oh, oh, I should have done that on the toilet. So that can really help. I mean, luckily we didn't really have um, any issue with that by the time we'd got to the let her run around naked stage she had kind of started to get what she needed to do when it comes to using the toilet. So. That wasn't too much of an issue for us, but if it's a warm day and you're having trouble with potty training, letting them just run wild and free, um, A, means that you're not ruining any clothes, although obviously be careful on your sofas, um, and B, it sort of sends a signal to them to remember, look, you're running bare here, there's nothing to protect you, if you need a wee, it's got to go in the toilet. Okay guys, I really, really hope that you found this video useful. As I said at the start, please don't let it stress you out if your child is three and over and not potty trained yet. I know from experience that it is stressful, but you will get there in the end. In fact, you'll be surprised how one day it does just click. It doesn't mean there is anything wrong with your child. It doesn't mean that you have done anything wrong yourself. So just relax, give it a break for a week or two, try again. If it doesn't work out, stop, try again, repeat. You will get there in the end. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments below and I will happily have a little chat with you about this and just talk to you about my experiences if you would like to know more. And I'm also gonna to link to a blog post on the subject in the description below. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Really, really hope that you found it useful and I will see you on the next upload. Bye.